These are products that have to be taken almost entirely on trust because, generally, their quality can't be judged before use. level of confidence in the quality of every single item, week after week, month after month, year well, in. virtually any product that is designed to cure or modify our health that we apply, take orally or inject, not forgetting the syringe itself. The list is very long and extends from eye drops and contact lens solutions and the lenses, of course. To control the quality of healthcare products, governments created regulatory authorities such as the FDA, the United States Food and Drug Administration. In the United Kingdom, there's the MHRA, Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency. Force of law. And similar bodies. GMP applies to the entire manufacturing process and starts with incoming raw materials and components, their warehousing and handling, the physical production of the product, packaging and distribution. Laboratories are also subject to the disciplines of key definition of product quality is that it must reach the customer, that is, the patient, in a state fit for its intended purpose. This isn't a target, but applies to each pack, to each tablet, capsule, component, each gas cylinder, each tube, with the rule each that dressing. every action will be undertaken only by following equipment written the environment in which it's installed are appropriate for the purpose and always properly cleaned and all work must be undertaken precisely and assessed and controlled by end product testing. It was assumed that by taking samples from a batch of finished products and then testing them, it would be possible to guarantee the quality of the whole batch. But think about it. In fact, it guarantees only the quality of each sample, and that never gets to the proactive and entails the systematic analysis of each process in order to pre-plan and then document how every activity will be assurance undertaken. creates and documents the instructions for what will be done. Quality control provides the physical verification that it has been or is being done. The department must ensure that the finished product is fit for its purpose and that each individual dose or component is made to the correct formulation and is free from contamination. In a nutshell, to validate something, ask simply that we prove and document that it works consistently as specific as reliable and repeatable production. The outcome of good validation is cost-effective through the reduction of equipment design failures, production faults, retail principle of GMP that nothing may be left to chance, is covered by the fundamental rule that everything will be completely documented. Documentation plays a crucial role with its twin functions to provide both instructions of what must happen and subsequently records of what did happen. Instruction documents are subdivided into three categories, starting with specifications, that specifies manufacturing and packaging. How many times this has been done before it's essential that the group are often described as standard operating procedures, usually shortened to SOPs. The final group of documents is records. These obviously record what's been done. The important thing about these documents is that they must record clearly and precisely, complete with the time compliant. The product must be, that phrase again, fit for the intended purpose. The important point is that the production environment must do nothing to impair the product. There's a the dastardly nature. rumor that good manufacturing practice doesn't apply to maintenance engineers and technicians because they're different. Obviously a myth because it does apply to them. Remember the phrase we used right at the beginning? You'll appreciate that a GMP-compliant product must contain only the materials with which it was formulated, specified, and licensed. Ample Anything else in the jar, syringe, is a contaminant comprising dead skin flakes which we shed in vast quantities every day, fibers from our clothing. Is that our normal bodily functions depend on the actions of countless millions of benign bacteria and other microorganisms that can be overwhelmed by the malicious group that causes control contamination of any sort. GMP places particular emphasis on viable organisms defined as living things that can reproduce, such as bacteria, Fungi Origins, and viruses which are anything that causes a rise in temperature in a living body. In healthcare terms, that means fever-inducing. Any chemical that's not part of a product specification is obviously a contaminant. But how they get into the product in the first place isn't always which a obvious. substance is carried from one process to another. It happens when equipment isn't properly cleaned. The materials from process A are carried through to contaminate process B. When you touch one surface, then another 
you transfer contaminants and are guilty of cross-contamination. If you're using disinfectants, it's important to check that you're using the right one at the right time, and very important to follow the instructions. Packaging delivered from a supplier cannot be assumed to be satisfactory. They must always be placed in quarantine to await quality control divided sampling. into two categories. The first, called identity labels, show what things are. For example, the content of containers. Second the equipment. category, called and status labels, show exactly what is happening to every container or piece of equipment at all, all times. labels must always be removed so there can be no confusion on the body of a container or piece of equipment. And training is the lead. last section of this program, not because they're the last things that matter, but the most the important purpose of training is to ensure that each person knows and understands their part in the process and how to undertake each specific task. Remember, our first priority for controlling contamination is to prevent it getting in. Critical to this is that we must wear the right apparel properly, properly after visiting the toilet. Protective gloves must always be worn when specified. Certainly no product or chemicals should be touched or handled. There are also strict rules in warehouse, production areas and laboratories prohibiting eating, drinking, chewing and smoking. Antibiotics in case of accidental cross-contamination of products in manufacture. Which really brings us back to where we started, except that you now know how GMP works to prevent all those unpleasant incidents from happening.